to the whole thing. Set the top. Yeah. We gotta have a better system than this. How's it going? Mitty. Excellent. What's up, guys? Breaking into song. I like that. Huh? Yeah. All I do all day. I don't actually do any work. I just sit here and play my guitar. Oh, it's like a good that. life. <laughs> it's a good life. Yep. I know you guys are out there selling houses, so I don't need to work anymore. Yeah. <laughs> selling away. We got a new one coming up today. Seven million bucks. Nice, nice. Be a good one to sell. Yeah. I'll bring I'll bring you a buyer. Yeah, yeah too. <laughs> Sorry, I'm making well, everybody yeah. panelists right now. Cam Cameron will have to get like 10 of his buyers, pull his mo their money together to buy that. All right, cool. From Florida, yeah, and, and his ear, his area is more expensive than mine, so I'm going to need twenty. <laughs> uh, that's funny. How's everyone doing, Randy? How you doing, buddy? I'm good, man. I've been uh, talking about you to my uh, my team that I'm growing and uh, getting all. They're all getting excited about doing uh, TikToks. So uh, let's see, let's see. It's it's the way to go, man. I last night I went viral in Germany. I don't know why, but I got over like a hundred thousand views in Germany and like ten thousand comments. They're all in German. It's really? it's like I obviously doesn't work great, obviously, but a hundred thousand views is a hundred thousand views. That's awesome. Well, the Germans like to come to Florida. That's the big thing. It's a German area, right? They like it is. to travel to Florida. We have a huge German market here during the summer, uh, which is our hot season, which is really kind of weird. But they, they usually are who keeps our summer rental market going. So really? um, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, let's get started up. Let's get this whole thing rolling. We're recording. It's good. Okay. We got it live go. stream. Look at Jan Caudel's here. Great. Wait, he's in the house. What is what is it when uh, I, I get the the lingo the um, the jingle now? If you want to get your home sold, call Jana Caldwell. Something like that. Right? And your home needs to sell, call Jana. Caldwell. Oh, that's right. When your home needs to sell, call Jana Caldwell. I love that. Um, okay, topic today, Mitch. Yes. Start so it off. So today, today, and I'll start it off. Today, we are going to talk about mindset in this market um because this is a beat the crap out of your market right um so i'm gonna i'm gonna give you a quick five minute story on on mindset this is normally a half hour story they're going to condense they're going to speak very bostonish so it'll be very quick um uh, so it's 17 years old some of you know this about me some of you may not know uh, i almost died i got burned really badly in a, in a uh in a car, not a car accident, but I was in a car. So I burned really badly, almost died. I had third degree burns on 20% of my body. Uh, this hand, you can see my bones. It was really bad. Uh, and I'm paraphrasing this really, really short. Got into the hospital and they told me I was going to be in the hospital for four to six months. And I was in a rock band back then. I used to be cool before this shit happened. I used to have hair down on my ass and really cool. And, and uh, it's amazing what happens over 40 years. Uh, and um, Anyways, they told me I'd be in the hospital for, 40, for four to six months. And I said, well, I can't do that. I have this big gig that I'm putting on and uh, with my band. And we've, we sold it out in, in Rockland, Pete and 
Dennis know what that is. It's the Rockland Sons of Italy. I think we had a thousand or two thousand people coming, and um, and they said, "Well, I'm sorry, there's no way you're getting out of the hospital in three weeks to play that gig." He said, "When you can go like this with your hands, you can get out." So um, every day I'd sit there. They'd take all the skin off me in the morning. It was very painful. Uh, and at night I'd sit there and try to move my fingers. I couldn't move them at all. Um, and then two and a half, well, a, a week later. I'm now not on the morphine anymore. Morphine is pretty funny. You can actually watch every cell grow back personally. It's very cool. And, um, and we, um, they were bringing in doctors. Like this doctor was from Los Angeles. This doctor was from Michigan. All over the country, doctors were coming in to see me. And I'm 17 years old. I'm just like wanting to fool around and have fun hanging out with my nurses because they're all cool. And um, anyway, so two and a half weeks later, my doctor walks in. I go like this and I played the gig. Right? So I got out of the hospital in two and a half weeks, which is physically impossible to do. Uh, I did not realize this until I was 50 years old. I went through a pretty bad time with, with some personal stuff. We won't get into it. And my wife put on the movie, The Secret. So if you're struggling with your mindset right now, you need to watch the movie, The Secret. You can read the book too, but I watched the movie because I can't read. And it immediately flashed me back to 17 years old. And I realized I cured myself of burns, right? So if I cured myself of burns, what can't I do? That simple. And I've, I've used that, you know, since then, I've used that every day since I've done that because there's things I don't want to do, right? I always have a positive mindset. You guys all know that I'm always full of positivity. But just like the rest of the world, I have my moments that are usually in private. I pick up my guitar and write a really bad, sad song and cry. And, and then I get back in my smile and I move back, back on. But using my point of the story is you all have that in you. If I cure myself of burns, you can do anything you want. And you're going to get negative shit happen to you in your life. And I'm not even just talking about real estate, just in your life. And how you deal with that is going to determine your future. So that brings me down to my final line that you have to incorporate into your daily life. And it's, it's from one of my friends named Henry Ford. We go back when he built the car. I gave him some advice on it. And he said, whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. And it's probably the best line I've ever heard my entire life in this in in any business because i know so many agents come to my office and oh i can't win the bid i can't win the bid you know what they do they never win the bid ever and when i have agents come in a lot of agents come call me from this call that we do here i can't tell you how many agents reach out to me for this from this call that we do and how much it's helping them but agents come and say, i'm going to win the bid what's the strategy i need to use and if you've been paying attention to our calls we've given you lots of strategies to win you can win the bid if you believe you can win the bid. But if you don't believe you're going to succeed, you don't believe you're going to win the bid, uh, you're not going to succeed. So whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. And you can fix anything you want with your brain. Um, I'm, I'm living proof of that. And um, there you go. Have a nice day. Thanks for shopping, Kmart. <laughs> All right. That was a good opening and one hell of a story from Rockland. Thank, thanks, Mitch, of your uh, rock and roll days. I like that. All right. But mindset is super important, as we just saw. Uh, I was at an event called the Masters. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but the mindset those guys have to have to play that golf course in those conditions for four days with 100,000 people watching them is unbelievable. Talk about discipline and mindset and staying focused. And that's the big thing. I think it's it's not easy to always stay focused and and have the right mindset to win every day. So you have to be prepared and disciplined and committed. And it's really important to kind of have a system that you follow to stay in the right mindset to win things. I want to go out to Brian Yarber. He's out uh, in Montana fly fishing. He just put down his rod. So Brian, what, what would you recommend to most agents in the market right now with rates going up, buyer sentiment getting a little weird, sellers still greedy on their prices, what type of mindset do they have to not only deal with the consumers, but to also deal with the other agents? Well, good morning and thank you. Um, Mitch, I love uh, quotes from Henry Ford. And uh, there's another one that I, I've kind of learned over the years. And it's, it talks about your experience. Experience becomes your supreme assets. In other words, if you've gone through a storm in your life, you went through it, but you got to come out of it. When you come out of it, you know how to help other people because you've come through one. <clears throat> so my first cycle, I got my license in 85. My first cycle crashed, in my opinion, for me personally, my business model in 91. 
San Diego went through a landscape shift that was really powerful. The RTC came in, they raped and pillaged all the SNLs and we lost everything. I lost everything, went through a bankruptcy, gave back two houses, gave back cars. And what I learned from that was the next cycle, I, I told myself, man, there were people crushing it in that cycle. But because I had not learned to crush it yet in a negative cycle, I didn't know where the business was going to come from. I bought into all the lies. Uh, Jared James just talked about that, right? In a, if you haven't watched his video. So I bought into those lies. I read the media. I was reading. The, I was so desperate. I was reading my horoscope and that determined my day. I, had, I was newly married. I had little kids. I was trying to you know, just do this thing. Well, almost 15 years later, in 2005, when the market had doubled a second time in the last five years, I learned to crush it in the, I was in the luxury market at that point, working with Gallagher and Gallagher and Rancho Santa Fe, if you guys know who they are, doing really well. And here comes that next shift. And when that shift happened, I actually exceeded everything I'd ever done. And I tripled my personal business and from 08, 09 and 2010, I, I did just more business than I'd ever done in the previous 10 years because I knew that there was a way to make it happen in a down market. So the short sale market, you know, the give back market, the, the days of, of just here's my keys, take my house type of market, um, best years of my life. I was doing short sales. I was double ending short sales. I was doing things that were not normal, but I learned how to adapt quickly. And then I, I, I jumped in and I was with Fortune Builders and Randy in 2013 and following the path of CT Homes and that what they were doing as an investment group and flipping properties. So what my mindset ended up telling me was, is no matter what the market is, there's always a good market and a bad market going on in a market. And what you need to do is you need to determine one thing, it's not your fault. Because what I did was I took a lot of personal value and all these homes that I had helped people buy at the peak of the market. And then they were calling me and having to go through a short sale and I was having to help them. Well, I used to think, man, that sucks, but it was never my fault. And when I found, when I realized that I was just doing my job, then I was able to do my job correctly. And now I was able to just counsel people through whatever they were going through. So the question really began to be, for me was people would say, how's the market? And no longer I would tell them what I thought of the market because it didn't matter what I thought. I would say, well, that just depends. What are you considering doing? Are you thinking about buying or selling? Because yeah, it's a great seller's market right now and it's a frustrating buyer's market. But when it's a great buyer's market, it's a frustrating seller's market. How do you, how do you, you know, counsel that? So that would be my biggest mindset takeaway was that I went through all these shifts and really the asset that I walked out was, is that it was my mindset that kept me from crushing it. And I had to buy into the fact that I was not the responsible party for what was happening to my clients. I was just there to be the counselor. And if I could just counsel them on, you know, the big question was, and in, in, um, some of you guys probably deal with this a lot is, well, if you sell, where are you going to? And where do you want to be when this market shifts again? Because it's either going to go up or it's going to go down or it's going to do things. And I began to focus on where are you going or why are you going? And, and it, you need to be insulated from interest rates. You need to be insulated from a, a, a correction. Are you buying for security or are you buying for investment? Investment means you have an exit strategy. Security just means you're buying long term. Some people buy both. Once you know that, now you know how to counsel them. Um, so, so I'm a big, big now uh, proponent of just keeping your mindset focused on don't own what your clients are doing, just be the counselor to help them understand what they are preparing themselves to get into, whether it's out of California or coming into California. If you're coming into another state, you're going to another state, you know, what, what's your exit strategy and why are you having this exit strategy? It's now the perfect time for you. Let's figure it out. Because if you're a 10, it won't matter what you do. You're going to do it because it's right for you. And so help your clients become a 10 client and they won't second guess or question what they're doing. Love that. Great stuff. Brian Yarber, how many fish did you catch this week? 
<laughs> I didn't. I just actually got back from Montana yesterday. I'm back in San Diego. I just. Oh, okay. Well, maybe you'll catch some other fish in San Diego or something. Yeah. It's a lot of fish out there, right? That we have to catch. I'm going to move from Montana to uh, Naples, Florida. To if you need to sell your home, call Janet Cardell. Janet Cardell, go ahead. Mindset. How important is it in this market? And how are you utilizing it in the luxury market in Naples and where your other big group is in Northwest Indiana? Well, I'm currently in Northwest Indiana right now. Um, I say attitude is everything. I've always said that. Um, and the biggest thing I do is whenever I'm in my little funk or whatever, I just go give and I help other people. Um, so regardless if you're in the luxury market or you're selling, you know, um, I always say big or small, we sell them all. So I don't just do luxury. I built my business on helping everyone. Um, and just being a giver when you're down and out and you're feeling sorry for yourself. Um, you just stop looking at within and you go look outside and, and you help and you give. And like you said, you counsel. I love that. Um, Brian, counseling others and being a consultant to others and not taking on their problems and their weight of it. Because I remember laying in bed at night, I used to carry, you know, 50 to 75 listings at any given time, sometimes up to 100. And I would stress about how am I going to get those listings sold? You know, I, I would take on their problems. And, you know, if they were getting a divorce or, you know, they're because in Indiana, we used to hold listings for a long time, sometimes a year. And so we had to really, really service them well all the time. So I finally just realized that, you know, it wasn't in my control. It was totally the market that was dictating everything. And they could take my advice or not. And, and just being honest with people and, and coming from a place of contribution. Um, but when I get out of my funk, I mean, I've read The Secret. I watched The Secret book. I even went on a secret cruise one time. And um, so that's the biggest thing is, is, um, you know, filling your mind with good things and, and coming from a place of contribution. And if you ever notice that when I'm down and out, it, if I'm giving a lot and I'm helping a lot, it's usually because I'm down. And I know that seems weird. Um, during COVID, I started a charity for my town and it, it's in a Facebook group of 18,000 people now, over 18,000. So that was one of the things that I did when, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. And, um, my mother always taught me, Mitch, that was one of the things she said to us when we got out of the car, can't, um, if you think you can, you can, if you think you can't, you're right. And she always said, can't never did anything. So, um, yeah, so I don't know. I mean, on my star power shirt, I had attitude is everything you win in life by helping others. And I think that's the biggest con contribution to my success, my team's success. Um, and I try to, to be around people that think like that. And I, I have a sales manager now, Chandra Pelican, and the biggest thing she does is, I mean, Chandra is a ray of sunshine. Um, she gets me out of my dark moment. She doesn't realize that, but first thing, she, I mean, she's, it's just, she's happy and she helps people. And when she's sad, I know when she's sad and she gets in her own funks and it's usually she gets out of it by helping other people. So. I love that. I love that advice. So I have one question for you. When you went on the cruise, did they not tell you where you were going? Was that the secret? <laughs> Honestly, the cruise ended up being a little bit of a dud. I think we all had such high expectations of what we were going to get, but we did meet, um, what's his name, Bob? Um, um, Bob Proctor, is it? Yeah, Bob, Bob Proctor. Proctor and um, a lot of the ones that were in the book, they were on the cruise and they all did little segments. But um, no, it, it was just, you know, I don't know that, that I read that book and I don't think it was on video at the time, but I read that book at a time in my life that just helped me um, think bigger. And, you know, I mean, I'm a small town girl from, and I grew up on a Holstein dairy farm in a very small town. And, you know, I mean, it was all, on, it was all in my mind. I could, I could do whatever I wanted to do and accomplish whatever I wanted to accomplish. So, um, you know, adversity, adversity is a good thing too. I mean, if you notice everyone who, who succeeds, it's usually when we were faced with adversity at a young age or at any age, right? Um, I mean, I became married at 19 and a mother at 20 and um, my life was kind of turned upside down too. And it was like, I could make the best of it or, or just, 
you know, deal with the card. I dealt with the cards that I was given, made the best of it. So just like Mitch said, so it's mind over matter all the time. 50 to 75 hey, hey, listings, you guys, and four sons. Okay. Pretty impressive. Exactly. Hey, you hey, have hey. to be scheduled and you have to be the right type of personality to run teams and be in two different markets and be a rock star and now be now promoting and reinvigorating uh, star power worldwide. So if you're interested in that, Jenna, how do they find out about star power? Uh, just go to starpower.com and it's on our website. There's a conference we're having um, in August um, in July or no, wait, July ah, um, in Dallas. Um, but starpower.com is it's a training organization. It's broker agnostic. So, and, you know, any any um, real estate agent can tap into it team. Um, that's how I built my career. It was Howard Norman, formerly uh, Howard Britton, Star Power. And um, I ended up buying the rights and we're relaunching it. So I've got a great team of people and we're looking for superstars too. Um, people that are newer in the business, um, you know, not just, I mean, not just the older ones, you know what I mean? We're, we're um, infusing, Pete's one of my ambassadors. So, you know, if you guys have anybody that want to attend or if you want to attend, we'd love to see you there. Um, we're going to have universities, bring back the universities too, which they're, they're specialized universities, buyer university, seller university, team building. Um, but the conference will be a good array of everything. And we're going to have great speakers. We have the president of NAR that's going to attend um, as well and give us kind of a, a speech and state of the union and everything, state of the address. Yeah, you guys, here's my advice. If you're sick of where your business is at and you're not making breakthroughs every year, go to this conference. I'm telling you, Jen is on here. She's a rock star. She'll make sure that conference is unbelievable. And I'm sure she's been to a few over the years. So she knows her stuff. All right, I'm going to go from Northwest Indiana, Crown Point, Northwest Indiana. And we're going to go to the beautiful island of Martha's Vineyard. Janet Lee Scott's on here. She's a luxury agent with the XP in Martha's Vineyard in Edgartown, one of my favorite places. And she's got a beautiful office right there, right on Main Street in Edgartown. But Janet, how do you utilize the right mindset, especially being on an island and dealing with high-end people when a lot of times your, mar your market there is you know, a second, third home type of market. Can you touch upon that? Um, I'm, I'm very lucky. My background was in a corporate role. So I, I was with Staples for 20 years in, in corporate America for a total of 35. So when we decided to, we had always known we were going to live here eventually. And when we decided to do it and I told my husband I was going to sell real estate and he goes, you and the other 800 agents. And I said, Chuck, I got a different set of skills um, just because I have a different background. I said, and I think those skills have value. Um, and, and they do because it's at my background. You probably won't know what this is because you know, most people don't, but I'm a lean six Sigma black belt, which means I'm really good with the numbers and I can make a spreadsheet sing. So when you're dealing with C-suite people, that's what they want. It, it's all about the numbers and everything else is an opinion. It's, that's what it is. So um, you, have, you, you must be high touch. You must remember they have no time. They don't want to chit chat. They just want you to answer the questions, get off the phone and continue with their day. So I've been very comfortable with that. That is something that I, I grew up with, it, it, you know, being in uh, the environment I was. Um, so that part is, is in my DNA, if you, if you want to say. Um, the other thing is, is that I'm a, I'm a fairly friendly person. <laughs> and so <laughs> I grin a lot. I laugh a lot. Um, and so the, where we are, where we are in Edgartown, literally in the spring and summer, we have these wonderful doors that open up and there aren't any steps. So people, as Pete knows, they fall on the door. I mean, they literally fall on the door. 
And what I've been training uh, my agents uh, to do is just talk to them. Most people avoid going into a real estate office because they it's like I'm now committed. I have now gone into a real estate office. That must mean I'm interested in something. I said, get to know their dog. Give their dog a biscuit. Um, you know, where are you from? Are you visiting? How often have you been to the vineyard? Very casual. And, and eventually they'll, they'll say, well, you know, I've always thought I'd like to live here. How hard is it? Oh, you know what? Let me tell you, we have, I have something I can um, sign you up with. You're going to get access to every single thing that's on the vineyard. Nope. No uh, obligation. If you ever see anything, let me know when I can, I know every property. And so what I've done with training my people is during COVID, it was a little different, but now you're going to every open house. You're going to know those agents. You're going to know that property. I have a little uh, superstar. Her name is Valentina Globa. She came from, and Pete met her. <laughs> she came, her story is, if I ever have a poor me moment or a pity party, I think about Valentina. Valentina graduated college, grew up in Moldova, which if you don't know, it's the very small country next to Ukraine. Came to the United States, did not speak English, had $200 because over there, $200 meant something. Over here, it meant nothing. Um, started out in South Dakota. I don't even know how she got to the vineyard. Got to the vineyard, worked um, at a coffee shop, Espresso Love. I'm sure Pete knows that one as well. Worked there for seven years, decided that that was not going to be her road to success. Got her real estate license. And luckily enough for me, someone was in there getting coffee and a regular of hers, she knew him. And she's, he said, she said, I got my real estate license. And he said, oh, you got to go to work with Janet Scott. And so she came down. Now here is, this is the moment when I'm ever feeling sorry for myself. This changes it. I'm going to give you good response. She had the closing on her first transaction on the same day that she was awarded her American citizenship. So that's, you know, and she is crushing it. And I have, I have had so much fun pouring into her. She comes onto these calls. I, I just, and she is hungry and ready. And will, and even though English is not her first language, she has learned how to come out of her shell. It's just, it's been a lot of fun watching um, that American dream come true. So she, she helps me with my mindset a lot. Um, have to give you a plug, Bill, um, Bill Core Boxes, I know in, the, in this room, um, and we're holding this amazing luxury event on the vineyard. Love for anybody to come. Uh, we're having a video boot camp on May 6th, and we're gonna have a celebratory Kentucky Derby party, the two most exciting minutes in sports, let's face it, on the 7th. We are very fortunate that our CEO, Jason Guessing, is joining us. The president of Global uh, Expansion, Michael Valdez, is, is uh, joining us. Um, and an awful lot of other really top performers at EXP. So we are beyond blessed and are super, super excited. So I'm sure we'll be drowning everybody on social media with videos because Bill's all over that. Oh, and if Bill's involved, there's going to be videos coming out of people's ears all yeah. over the place. So, so Janet, great, great advice, great input. I love the story about the, the woman in your office. I met her. She's lovely. Really, really nice. And she's, she's open, you guys. She loves to have discussions and she listens well. She doesn't listen to interrupt. She listens to contribute, right? And to ask questions. And that's the key. You should be asking people questions. They love to talk about themselves. And when it comes to mindset, she has the right mindset to come from uh, Moldova all the way to South Dakota and then to the vineyard. I mean, look at that story and to become a citizen and learn English and, and really hustle. And I met her one night at the office. It was eight o'clock at night. And she came out and started talking to me and we had a great conversation. It was really, really impactful. She was, she was dynamite. So, you know, you can tell that Janet's been pouring herself into her and really helping her. Uh, Janet, 
is that event open to everyone on May 6th, the video boot camp and the Kentucky Derby party? Yes, we have um, we have it open. Uh, knowing that we're going to be able to have uh, small businesses, we want them to come if they're able. Any real estate agent, we don't care. Uh, I was talking to one um, and said, you really should think about this. And she looked at me and she goes, well, why would you do that and invite other real estate agents? And I said, well, I'll tell you. I think it's going to help raise the water level for everybody. You're going to learn a lot of things. But if you think for one minute that that one boot camp is going to help you become what Bill Kerbox does for me, eh, not going to happen. I'm not threatened. I know that I've got the best doing my videos. I just want to learn how to do other videos well. I said, you know, as, as, a, as, a, as a luxury location, we need to make sure that our videos reflect it. I said, I want everybody to do better. And she was just like, huh? <laughs> and Indeed. the Derby party is also open to everybody. That's great. And that's May 6th, May 7th, you guys, on the vineyard. And is it in Edgar Town or where is it being held? Um, one of your favorites is being held at Farm Net Golf Course. <laughs> Ooh, I love Farm Net Golf Course. It's, By um, the way, Janet, see, and Janet's there. The, see, that, that's Janet's counterpart right there, Holland, yeah. all excited I, about the event. So anybody's welcome. I would go out there, you guys. It's a great networking opportunity for all agents from all companies. It's a place to contribute and learn and elevate your game, whether you're in luxury or not. Video is the way to go. That's how everybody right now digests content. 88% of humans, that's how they digest content is through video. So it's super, super important and, and builds uh, amazing with it. So I want to go from that. Janet, thanks for your contribution there. I'm going to go to the island of Bali where Randy's traveling with a nine-month-old. Uh, Randy, how's everything on the beach? What what did so here's my question for you. When you ran CT Homes, and I know Brian helped out too, what did you guys do on a daily basis through good markets and bad markets to keep people engaged and to keep their mindset in a positive manner to succeed? Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Coming, uh, it's bringing back cool memories. So, um, so the CD Homes is an invest uh, redevelopment company. We like to say not a flipping company. Uh, we make, you know, houses beautiful again. Uh, so we, we had a, you know, we still have that team, but when I was running it with JD, we had a bunch of young, young kids there, uh, a lot of college kids, interns. Uh, so the energy was, was actually, uh, pretty fun from that standpoint, but we needed to lead the way, right? Because if we don't create it, then they don't really follow. So what we, we started understanding who our team is, right? What's important to them. So we actually, I don't know, if Brian, you remember this, we had like competitions in the morning, right? We had a, we had a board and we would like, who can do the most uh, pull-ups, uh, push-ups, and then if you're a, you were a lady, then we, we had a replacement exercise for you, right? So you can still compete and have this little fun competition. Or if you, so one of the things was like, if you were on the phone calling agents to try to put in offers and you, you know, you get the phone slammed on you or get rejected, we would always say like, hey, stop and go and do one of the things, check a box off from the competition, right? Do some push-ups, change your state of mind, right? Uh, so we would do things like that. We also uh, did, uh, I don't know if it was daily, but it was definitely weekly. Uh, we had a team meeting and we would start with core values and core value shares, right? That we have uh, maybe seen and other team members do, right? Throughout the week or last week. Uh, so we would raise each other up and honor each other and, and share those type of wins um, and we do a daily huddle with everybody, which those are only a couple minutes long, just to get, again, get everybody going in the right mindset. And every single huddle starts with a win, right? So you, again, you shift your mindset right from the beginning. What are you grateful for? What, what, what went well in your life, you know, since last night, right? Uh, since yesterday, right? And it doesn't have to be business. It, it was personal and business. So, I would say creating that culture, right? If you have a team, that's huge, right? Because, I mean, they they got rejected all the time on a phone, right? Like that's just how it is, numbers wise. So, 
we have to, as leaders, bring that energy, right? And lead the way. So that's one thing. And uh, Pete, I wanted to also, because I, I just learned English actually uh, last year, uh, Janet. <laughs> I came from Poland. Uh, I'm kidding. I was born in Poland. I came when I was 11. And uh, so that story resonates what you shared about your, your friend there. And, you know, that's kind of like my personal way of always reminding myself where I came from, right? Because I've, I've lived in Poland during communism. I've lived during those times where everything was very limited and uh, you didn't have abundance of stuff. However, I didn't know any better because that was just my life as a kid. Uh, so anyway, when I came to America, it was eye opening to me, right? Just that, like what I have access to. So I always remind myself of, of my own story and I'm grateful. You know, I, I, I go into a grateful mindset when I'm in a funk. So my suggestion to a lot of you would be, you know, if you don't have that story, because maybe you had an amazing, you know, a great life growing up find someone else's story, right? Like, like Janet is, is, that's a perfect example. Like, look, man, this girl just is crushing it. Like, what is my excuse? Like, if she's doing this, what is, what, what, what am I doing? Right. And for me, um, you know, as I was growing up, one of my first business partners and Brian, you know, you know him as well, John, Man, when I got to know him and I learned his story uh, where he felt comfortable sharing it, where he told me that literally it's, it, it's a little dark, where he literally had his father like kill his mom in front of him. And then his brother, while we were business partners, committed suicide, putting like in front of a train. Like, and this kid, if you look him up, Jonathan Steingraber, he is an absolute beast. Like in terms of business, his life, I mean, talking about mindset. So even though I had my story that I can tap into, I always get reminded of my, my first business partner, John, which is his story. And I'm like, what the heck am I doing? Why? What's my excuse? I want to think bigger now, even more. So find, find those people that motivate you and, and remind you of, on those down moments, like maybe and reach out to that person. Right. Be like, dude, man, what are you doing now? Like, I, I need a little bit of kick in the butt. Right. Because I'm down. Right. Reach out to them. And I bet you there is a pro you know, high probability that they're going to be able to get you out of that funk. Right. Um, so anyway, so and it all ties into community. So I, I would say don't do it alone. Right. Like you need to be tapped into a community. Uh, I, I keep saying Brian because Brian knows my life more than anybody on this call. Uh, when I when I found you know the the church community uh, seven years ago here in San Diego that literally changed my life right so find your tribe find your people you know that that relates to your values that that drive you that are positive right uh, our people you know we had fortune builders around us we have our church around us community if I'm down I'm gonna go to men's prayer at 5 30 in the morning on a Tuesday morning and I'm surrounded by hundred men praying like you can't you, you can't walk out of there with a with with a negative energy like you might come in with it but you can't leave with it it's impossible when you're surrounded by just constant prayers and positivity right it's contagious right so but so yeah so just don't stay isolated that would be I think my final thought on that. And I'll drop something in, in the chat for you guys and open this image, uh, the JPEG. And uh, what Brian Yarber said about Jared James, who's one of our uh, you know, real estate coaches for our organization, it was actually very profound what he said. He's like, look, guys, stop saying we have an inventory problem. We don't have an inventory problem. Open that image I just sent you. And what do you guys see on the image is that the sales nationally have been increasing every single year. And yes, you can say population is growing too. And I think that also is keeping up with that. But take a look on 21 and 22. 6.9 million homes have sold in 2021 and 2022 is projected to be the same, right? In 2020, 6.5 million. That's COVID, right? in 2019 was less. So we have more home selling 
during what we call we have no inventory nothing is you know there's no real estate to be sold that's not true and I, I was a good reminder to me and changed my language with my own team and my own clients as well going forward and i'm going to use this to show them like look people are buying it's not that we don't have inventory there is just less inventory that if if nothing else came on the market it's going to be gone in three months in in uh what do you call it what is it a month now right but the good news is houses keep coming on the market period and people are buying so anyway so use that stat so that's all i got so it's a great point and a great contribution randy you know i know john not personally as personal as you do but his story is amazing it's really inspirational and he did not allow certain moments in his life to define him. His mindset was so strong and he was so driven. You know, he broke out of that and became uber successful. And when he speaks on those moments, there's not a dry eye in the house because he's so authentic and sincere. Yeah. And it just, it, you know, the point is, is don't let those moments define you on who you are as a person or as a business person in life. You know, you have to, you have to visualize what you want and manifest what you want. And it's really important to have that discipline. Um, you know, those are some great, great points, especially, you know, my father used to always say to me, you guys, we're in one of the greatest businesses in the history of life. We don't have to store things. Things don't expire necessarily. Um, you know, we're, we're helping a buyer or seller come together to create a market, right? And when you have somebody who wants to sell, and you have somebody who wants to buy, that's the best recipe to start out with. And then you just have to keep everybody moving forward. Everybody will move forward till somebody stops talking. Once somebody stops talking, somebody has to make a decision. Either the seller has to make a decision to accept the offer or the buyer has to make a decision to accept the seller's offer or re-offer, that's it. So just keep it moving forward. That's great advice, great mindset in this type of market because don't wait for the market, be proactive and go create the market. You know, everybody says all the time, oh, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. Go talk to people, ask them about their lives, ask them about what's happening because life happens. Life does not stop, life does not slow down. People get born, people die, people get divorced, people move, people uh, upsize, people downsize. There's things happening all the time. Just be there for them and be in service to others. So we're gonna go from the beaches of Bali, where Randy is, up, you know, all the way to Florida to the new new age David Hasselhoff, loved by Germans, Cameron Smith. He's he's the new David Hasselhoff of the Germans in Florida. Cameron, talk about mindset, talk about what you're doing to every day. Do you have a routine that you do to get in the right mindset to invite or manifest? what you want each day every day every single day guys you guys are gonna love this you got your pens let's let's do this i'm i this is this is my this is my whole world honestly if i didn't do this stuff every day um i wouldn't be here i would not be a, the person i would be you know i wouldn't be happy and fulfilled in life so this is really important to me guys uh the first thing i want to ask everyone and I, this is really important have you ever believed something that was wrong ever in your life and everyone has we truly believe something, man. I've been stuck and my wife told me something. I was like, no, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. And then you look it up and uh-oh. Well, same way in life. So the number one thing everyone has to do every day or you know, start with a couple times a week, but really it becomes every day, the first hour in your day, daily uh, perspective. So you need to take a few minutes, uh, visualize, do your perspective. Some people call it yoga. It doesn't matter. Take five minutes and remember that we are blessed, right? We are in a situation that the whole rest of the world is not in. Um, with that perspective, you'll be able to set your day forward. Um, always start your day off at zero. Mike Ferry personally taught me this one. Doesn't matter if you made six figures this month or you made zero this month, you start your day off at zero in sales because today you're gonna make it or you're not and it's up to you. Um, affirmations and chanting. This is another Mike Ferry thing. Every morning, I don't do it anymore. I should, but I don't. But every morning as for the last 10 years, um, I would chant affirmations and I would chant um, uh, role-playing scripts for, for you know, four sub-owners and expired. That's how I learned all my scripts. 
the affirmations I find are more important than the scripts these days because I've learned how to talk to people. Um, the affirmations are just your great agent. You can do this. This is going to happen. Whatever I'm currently working on, that's going to be done properly. That is pseudoscience. That is what the secret was all about. The secret actually came out in 2006 and it was a, a phenomenon because it happened during an economic crash. So everyone needed help. Everyone needed uh, pseudoscience. But the thing about pseudoscience is it's real. Um, like, like, um, like you were saying about your, your prayer, Randy, it, it, it's true. It, it helps. It guides us. It, you know, it moves us and it, it changes our perspective, which is obviously the most important thing. Um, and, and it's a real thing. So you guys need to buy into that. Um, visualization is huge for me. When I was 16 years old, I sat and I visualized owning a BMW. I was just, you know, really getting into real estate at that time. Um, I sat in my, and I visualized, I felt it. I genuinely felt the steering wheel in my hands. And today I own that exact car. It's, it's, it's just the way the world works. If you can see it and you can believe it, you can achieve it. And it's true. Um, that's a Zig Ziglar quote. And it's obviously one of the best. Um, the third thing you guys is you have to screen what we're putting in our minds. The most expensive real estate is between our ears. And everyone is just allowing stuff to flow into us. Um, remember when people would say stuff like, don't believe what you read on the internet. Don't talk to strangers. Don't, you know, now no one, everyone thinks that you read it on Facebook. It's real. You read it on CNN. It's real. Well, what you don't realize is most of that stuff in three to five days is edited. Um, TV, huge. Everything on TV has an angle guys. They're, they're, they're trying to do something. And then remember, it's all about ads. It's all there to keep you in for ads. They're not there to provide for us. The TV system needs to be abolished. I don't even own a TV anymore. Um, friends and family, huge, you guys. If you have friends that are saying you aren't going to do it, just get rid of them. They're, they're, they, they're not friends. You need people around you that'll support you. Uh, same with your family. Family is a little harder. Obviously, you have to make decisions on what's important. But if you have a family that's negative or isn't, isn't helping you achieve what you're trying to do, uh, you know, screen them out as best as you can. And then the biggest one for me and my business was brokers. Um, my previous broker here two, three years ago, um, when I needed support from them, I went into his office and he said, well, you should do more open houses. I said, no, 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 no. I, I need real support. So that is when this whole thing changed for me is I got a team. I got a mentor with Bobby Martins and you, Pete and Mitch and all of you guys um, that have changed my life. And if you don't have that team for you in your business, it's going to be very challenging to grow. Um, whenever I'm feeling down or I'm not, I'm not up to it. I text one of my, I, I text Bobby or I text, text uh, Mitch or I text one of you guys. And it's like, Hey, What's going on? Um, and usually what happens is, you know, hey, I, you know, it sucks that it's not working real good, but we're, we're bombing it over here. You should try this. And they get you motivated and get you moving. And no matter what funk you're in, if you start moving, you'll get out of it. It's, if funks only stay where they are, you only stay down if you allow yourself to. If you get moving and you get up and you get working, um, you'll get it done. The other thing is there's two different mindset topics today is obviously personal, which is what I'm talking about. Personal mindset's everything to me. Um, if I'm not in the right mindset, I don't prospect, I don't, I don't work and I have to work. So mindset, personal, the second one is your client mindset for this market. Um, Brian, what you brought up about being a selling agent rather than a listing agent, rather than a buyer's agent, that was spot on. And you, that's because you've been an agent for long enough. You know, so many agents have been an agent for two years. I had a, I had a rock star that I'm bringing on. He's just a, he's a superstar, but his, his comment yesterday was, I know I'm so used to having six pendings and I only have two right now. What are we going to do? It's like, oh man, you know, <laughs> let me train you when this market shifts and we go back into like an expired market, having six pendings, you're going to be the biggest guy in the whole state. So, you know, it, it, mindset is key. Being experienced is key. Being able to help your agents um, based on your experience through the 2008 crash. Obviously that's when I started my career. Um, that's helped me. I can then relive or I can tell people like, hey, you know, you got two pendings. That's okay. Let's focus. Let's get you moving again. And you'll get right back up to four right now. Uh, but you also need to prepare your team for that when it does slow down a little bit, when things take 30, 60, 90 days to sell, they don't all get depressed. Um, if you guys remember at 2019, when the COVID started, we had three or four months of standstill real estate. It like stopped. Everyone got depressed. Everyone, I mean, I had, I had team people that were like, what are we going to do? We can't pay our bill. Like people were losing their minds. Well, we set, we set up groups, we set up mindset groups, we set up um, extra stuff to provide for them, to keep them moving forward. And then in a few months, obviously the market took back off, thank goodness, and we have been, you know, no, no, uh, no problem since then. But that is gonna change if this market does shift and we need to be ready to provide more, be more supportive, be more encouraging, 
and, and remember to share successes, not bragging, we're not bragging, but we're sharing that these systems that we're providing to you are working. Uh, we want you to use them because again, motivation is, comes from uh, seeing other people doing things that you want to do. So share your successes with your team, lean on your team. If you need them, talk about your feelings. Like, you know, that's, that's such a silly thing to say, but if you're not feeling like up to it, I admit you, you talked about this earlier. If you're not feeling like a rock star that day, let someone know and they'll pump you up. That's what we're here for, man. Like, let's get it done. Let's pump you up. Let's get going. Get back on the phones, get a client. And I, every time that I get a client, we go pending. My mood goes always, you know, every time you make money, you have good mood. So if we can get you making money, we'll get you in a good mood. Um, I think that's all I got for you guys. Force yourself to believe. That's, that's it. Visualize until you believe it and then make it happen. Love it. When, when does the new Knight Rider series starring you in Germany start? That's what I want to know. Right. I need, I need, I need, I need one of the uh, Knight Rider cars. Yeah. That's great. Okay. So listen, you're getting a lot of great tips on mindset and how to kind of control your mindset on a daily basis. Just win the day. You know, everybody thinks they have to solve everything all the time and that's their perception. That's just your mind playing tricks on you. You know, win the day. That's what you want to do. That's the main thing. Win the day and be constantly in service to others. When you take that approach and you help everyone around you get what they want, you'll automatically get what you want. You know, it's okay to have negative thoughts or say nothing's happening. I, I see so many agents out there, they'll say, oh, I, I got nothing going right now. I have no listings. I have no buyers. Well, that's what the universe is going to give you. What you're, what you're putting out there, you're going to get back. So you got to flip that switch. That's what it's called. You got 10 minutes to bitch and moan, then you got to flip the switch because otherwise it'll just keep snowballing all day long. You know, it's like the guy who gets up in the morning and uh, hits the snooze button and then he's late for an appointment. Then he stubs his toe. Then he's getting ready and he spills the coffee on his shirt. And then he gets in his car and he gets in a car accident. And then he's 30 minutes late and the people leave, right? And it just keeps going and keeps going. And then they love to tell everyone all their misery. They love to empower it, right? They love to give it life by telling the same story over and over and over. You know, if you tell a story to more than two people, you're not looking for a solution. You're, you're looking for an audience. You know, that's the big thing. And you have to look at that, you guys. It's a very, very powerful quote, you know, because everybody on this call or in the real estate market or in any business. You know, like Cameron said, the, the main real estate battle is in seven and a half inches in between your ears. And everybody has a specific question that is bouncing around in their head all the time. And when you have that specific question, that creates a certain focus. And when you have that focus, that creates a certain feeling that you can't get past that feeling. So get that out of your head. Stay positive, you know, do chants, do mantras, do uh, affirmations. Your money, money flows freely to me. I'm unstoppable. You have, to, you have to get yourself pumped up. This is not an easy business or an easy industry. That's what everybody wants you to think it is. You have to go through this and be repetitious and be really, really diligent and be committed. That's the big thing. Cam, go ahead. Are you speaking German? Yep. Nope. German. Yeah, here. German. Yeah, that, that's right. You guys can't hear it, huh? Danke uh, schön. One more thing. One of my biggest challenges, and I know a lot of us are going through this because we're becoming successful from an average agent to a super successful agent, um, the imposter syndrome. I'm sure everyone's experienced that feeling like they don't belong. One thing I want you to remember is that you guys all belong. If you're doing the work, you are earning what, what you're making, uh, and, and you belong in, in the groups that you're in. You belong to be successful. Um, and that's very important because that took me a long time to realize that no one told me that everyone, you know, I was doing the work, but no one said, Hey, you really should, you know, you really are actually doing good. Um, so if you, if you are putting in the work, you're doing it, you're, you're helping your clients, you're caring about your clients, you're rewarded by, um, our commission. So keep that in mind too. Brian, you've had your hand up a while, man. Let's, let's get you answered. Well, I'm only going to take two minutes because I'm going to let Jana ask her question, but Cameron, what you were talking about, I'm going to give you a quick example of this in, in Janet. Um, in uh, 2016, my wife ran the Boston Marathon for like the eighth time, right? So that's her thing. Uh, I had a bucket list. I always wanted to see the vineyard. I'm wearing my vineyard shirt, by the way, today. Just happened to be wearing it. 
So I, 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 we rent a car, we drive to the Cape, we hop on a ferry, we go over to the island, we walk off, we get a car and we drive the whole island. All I'm doing is my bucket list. I'm looking at real estate. I'm driving by every house. I'm spinning lunch at, at Edgar Town. Uh, I'm, I'm just in love with this island. And I see it at a time of year when it's not pristine. You know, there's, there's not a lot of greenery on the island in April after the marathon, but I'm there. And we hop on the plane, we're coming home. And, and I look at my wife who just came off running the Boston Marathon. And she looks at me, and she goes, I can't get that bike path out of my head. And I'm like, what are you talking about? What bike path? Well, evidently there was a bike path that works its way around the whole friggin' island. And she's a runner. I'm in real estate. I'm looking at gorgeous properties, but in her mind, she was <laughs> visualizing running on the island. So <laughs> Janet, I'm going to come see you in a few weeks because my wife literally owns and operates the Martha's Vineyard Marathon and Half Marathon in May every year. It's our fourth year. COVID didn't shut us down. We're going to be back. So I'm going to come visit you. That's my shameless plug for, for Martha's Vineyard. But it's such a mental thing where she visualized and literally owns and operates a business on that island. And we spend two, three years a year. So, that's awesome. Yeah. So thank you for letting me plug that. But that's the, that's the, <laughs> the power of the visualization that you were talking about, Cameron. I just want to share real quick. Um, someone told me one time that breakdowns always happen before breakthroughs. And <clears throat> so if you really look at, you know, anything where you're just constantly struggling and it's a challenge and you're like, you know, almost like that bad day that you were describing that that person was having, um, <clears throat> those are signs of a breakdown. And that means that a breakthrough is so on the horizon. But what happens is so people just quit or they give up, right? When the going gets tough, they, they stop instead of, you know, breaking through that. And sometimes it's just a matter of making a few small adjustments to help you break through that ceiling of achievement and going to another level. So, and if you really look back at all the times you were really struggling or you were afraid or you were scared or you were not confident of yourself or whatever, it's like you're on the verge of a major breakthrough. And when you look back, you know what I mean? You see that that was a gift. It, you know, and sometimes it's, it's up to us if we're going to take that gift and run with it and make make something bigger and better. So just know that whenever like I'm I'm myself experiencing a major breakdown right now. And I know it's because I have a breakthrough hap about to happen. Um, but it's up to me to stay in the game. It's up to me to get on this call, which it's about mindset. And I guess it was meant for me to be right. Like it was, I was supposed to, I have not been on one of these calls yet. You guys all keep telling me to get on. So I was like, it's just interesting to look back and just to know that the breakdowns always happen before breakthroughs. We all have breakdowns. Anybody who tells you they don't, they're not being forthcoming. It's not an easy business. You guys, Hey, I had Bill on, look at, look how good looking he looks. He's, he's on the Malibu coast. And I just want him to share his, his two cents on mindset when it comes to video and promoting yourself. Go ahead, Bill. You got to unmute, Bill. You can't do video with no sound. Okay. So first of all, what Jana, Jana just uh, shared was so spot on. But I'm going to go a little off point. I'm going to try and answer that. But here's what I have been learning. I watched this guy this morning on YouTube. And he said that most people wake up in the in the day and they try and reconnect with the problems that they had they want to go back and think and i go oh shit that's me and then they start to go back to these old patterns and as basic as it is we've all heard it we all probably say it you know uh to create the things that you want you have to actually believe it you have to already taste it but the way that he put it really connected with me in a way. So now when I get up, I immediately start thinking about me being like Pete Middleton, right? Or me being like, uh, you know, the, my, my new house here in Florida. And I really don't stop. I go right into that instead of, I mean, God, the fear that comes between the brain is unbelievable. I don't know who creates it, but when I wake up in the morning, it's easy to go there. So my tip is that mindset starts first thing with a change of attitude 
and forget about the things that have happened that you're concerned about and get on to thinking about the things that you want. Because let me tell you right now, what 78,000 people, sorry about that, uh, 78,000 people with EXP, you know, within a year, right? We're gonna have uh, 150,000 people. Those people are gonna be joining organizations, right? My vision is I want them to join my organization. We are in such a sweet spot. So anyway, honored to be part of the meeting. Thanks, Pete, for inviting me. Yeah, Bill, great, great input, you guys. Thanks, great meeting. Uh, be at Bill's event, May 6th in Edgartown at Farm Neck with Janet Scott and the whole crew there. They're great people. If you haven't gone to Martha's Vineyard, sorry, let me say it right. Martha's Vineyard. I can't even say it right, right? Um, just, that's the big thing. Get there and he'll show you guys how to use the right mindset to get past fear, to really make yourself a celebrity and get out there for free on video and get more business. I'm telling you, that's where everything is going. That's where everything is. And he's going to advance you even more. So keep that in mind. Get out there and sign up for that event. Go ahead, Pete, Bill. Uh, real quick, uh, Mitch, uh, we're having an event with oh, yeah. in in uh, in in um, uh, Melbourne. in Melbourne. Thank you. Uh, and it's on the 26th for about three hours, and we're going to go to it. It's going to be we're going to get right down into it. How to use video to get listings? How to do it on your mobile phone? Uh, there's no cost for it. Uh, I think we got a few seats left, so uh, we'd love to see you in Melbourne. And just remember, you guys, that's not Melbourne, Australia. Mitch <laughs> is not Mitch Dundee. He's in Melbourne, Florida, and that's on April 26th. Yeah. And 26, two, 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 uh, one to, was it one to four or two to five? I forget. Two to five. Uh, I, think I think it's. I think it's. Uh, I think it's two to four, and then I believe you're having one of your world famous cocktail parties it, you definitely don't want to miss that he doesn't cheap out on so that if you're an agent with any company reach out to mitch ryback mitch how do they join to come uh learn I'm how to do to, videos uh, i'm gonna put the link in the box in two seconds uh, let me just uh yeah please sign up copy, it's gonna be a good event. and guys whoever's yeah, so on this i'll uh, put it in the this, chat but yeah if you, um, it's, it's in the chat right now but if you want to attend just um just send me an email, Mitch at MitchRealty.com. Mitch at MitchRealty.com. That's where it all starts and it all ends. Listen, guys, we're, we're going over right now, but here's the deal. If you want to attend any of these events, you can go to CurveBoxMedia.com. You can go to Mitch at MitchRealty.com and uh, talk to Mitch, talk to Bill. There's some great events. It doesn't matter what brokerage you're with. It doesn't matter. This is brand agnostic. It's open to everyone. Invite all your friends. I'm telling you, it will benefit them. And they'll be grateful to you. Have an attitude of gratitude today. Go out there, kill it, make the market. Cameron Smith, danke schön. And, uh, you know, keep up the German. Okay, guys, we'll talk to you soon. We'll see you next week. Cheers. Great meeting. Thank you. Cheers. Danke schön.